All right, you are still watching Waze. Programmer's Day is a professional holiday celebrated in many countries around the world to recognize the work of computer programmers. <laughs> it is celebrated on different dates in different countries, but the most common dates are January 7th and September 13th. So today is all about programming. <laughs> I don't know. Do you have any computer programming knowledge at all? Um, a bit, but I never practiced, never did anything. And With it. I think it was, I'm still very, very much a beginner in <laughs> anything programming. But computer-wise, mm. yeah, I can do, I can troubleshoot a lot, but programming, no, not no, my strength. Right. Yeah. But it was the time you did the code, um, code camps for children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, the um, summer camp. Yeah, for, yeah. for, for so coding. For coding, yeah. That was a good experience, but it wasn't involved. I, we, <laughs> you were just we did coordinators. That for, yeah, we were coordinating. It was something that we wanted to do, like, regularly and all that. And, yeah, it was a good, you know, um, shot at doing that because the kids had the opportunity. I think we had a lot of people... Um, at the end of the day, we had everyone built a website. So they had different websites. Some people had like restaurant kind of websites. Some people had like games. Some people had like some other services. So it was really nice seeing kids of that age being able to. And the way they talk about it, I'm just looking like, because I have no clue what they're discussing. But yeah, it, I think it's very, very important to start them up quite early. And yeah, they start making money quite early. Absolutely. Yeah. So what did you find for some news today? Well, my story in the news is an unfortunate um, story. So, uh, one of the ladies I I respect in the tennis world, oh well, wow. um, Simona Halep, she had um, some uh, how Doping? would I put it? Yeah. So <laughs> there was that accusation, and then um, recently I heard that another one. So there were two um, accusations leveled against her, which was the half um, failing the anti-doping um, test. test that they always do before the U.S. Open, I think. That was in 2022. And um, so, unfortunately, that they've, um, the tribunal has sat and they've listened to um, all, the, all the weaknesses and they've also um, looked through all the documentation that was handed over to them, and they came to the conclusion and how they've currently, as of today, they've handed Simona Halep a four-year suspension because she, um, the major accusation is because she tested positive for Rosa, Rosa Dostad. I don't, maybe I got that wrong, but yes, it's a, uh, uh, so currently she's a strain she's a, of, um, yeah, it's a, drug that um, has been uh, banned and you know some t I think some years ago the same something similar happened to Maria Sharapova and that was something that brought uh, her close to the end of her career because after she came back after I think she went for about two or three years by the time she came back the world of tennis had moved very far and there were so many more younger people who were quite vibrant and versatile in their style of play so that kind of knocked her right off the top of where she used to be and you know for for people as great as them who have been in the world for a long time it takes a lot of getting used to when you have this 19 year old and 16 year old beating ha, your go, ass go, go. <laughs> when you have them handing you your ass right in, in the in front of everyone because most for them it now became a thing of it was past the career it was now a thing of you know uh, relevance and all that because they used to have people like uh, the royals and all that and high um, class celebrities attend. come watch just because of that so it's it's quite a sad story because i really loved her play and her energy on court she was very and she was she was always um she was someone who spoke up against uh doping you know um in sports so to find yourself in this kind of situation and i know that sometimes this thing is a mistake because sometimes the um their coaches and trainers introduce them to some drugs that you know you wouldn't know 
they will tell you, oh, take this, you need this. And then at the end of the day, you find yourself here and now she's four years. So she has still, she's suspended till 2026, even though she has the right to appeal. And I hope she's 2026 appeals. or 2027? Four 20, years. Is... No, 2026. Oh, okay. 2026, October. Okay. So she has time to appeal, and I hope something comes up because really, this is one way of really killing great players. Mm. Yeah. Esther Skiamo, the Minister uh, for Aviation, uh, the Ministry of the Aviation and Aerospace, has said that to attract foreign investors, the federal government is looking at setting up an aircraft leasing company and maintenance organization and making foreign exchange available. He said that most of these projects, which is already on its roadmap, will help current administration in its vision of making Nigeria the aviation hub of Africa. So he said this during the 7th Africa Aviation Summit and exhibition that happened in Abuja. He assured that the government will ensure enforcement of contract agreements and the rights of investors and all parties are protected. It says Nigeria being a signatory to Cape Town Convention will uphold international obligation. And he also said that maintenance, repair, and overhaul facility is another critical aspect that can make the Nigerian aviation industry a hub on the continent, adding that with the shortage of um, qualified engineers, the current administration is willing to provide all necessary support for the establishment of world-class um, that's the maintenance, repair, overhaul, that's MROs, and the training organization. The minister assured that the current administration is committed to ensuring that Forex is readily available. Um, he said that the president has directed the CBN, um, that the president directed CBN to hold quarterly reconciliation meetings to resolve all the issues, and the, they're open to providing tax holidays to encourage existing and new entries into the Nigerian aviation sector. Um, it says um, they would upgrade the CAT-3 landing system at major airports, construct a second runway in Abuja, and improve airport programs through concessions and government willingness to partner with companies to turn major airports into aerotropolis. The minister added. Nice, 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 interesting times. You know, uh, but for you to make bold to say that you want to be the, the aviation hub of Africa. Omo, that's a tall order. Have you been to Kenya? Have you been to, you know, um, I think even Rwanda. I've not been to Rwanda, but I hear that the airports are really amazing. But Kenya that I've been to, it's like a hub of, yeah. like transit and yeah. all of that. It's a major aviation hub. And if you enter their airport, yeah. like literally every time you go there, it's almost like the Dubai airport. That like you are seeing here. something new, yeah. something yeah. new. Yeah. So it's not enough for us to just have these lofty conversations. Yeah. Literally, Nigerians have, well, which is good, which is one of the things is pointed out, maintenance. Because our problem is it's a maintenance. huge maintenance problem. Like you literally come down from the international airport, the first slap that slaps your nose is the smell of very stenched, like, you know, stale urine that, that slaps you first when you land at the international airport. Then the heat that slaps you and follows it, you know. Like, literally, I don't understand whether... It, like, I, I've, I've been trying to understand this. So the last time I landed in Nigeria and the AC was working, I was looking, I was looking with suspicious. But even at that, it was not as cool. So, see, eh, I think that... The attitude to public facility beyond the airport in Nigeria, mm. that attitude to public facility, it has to be changed in the minds of a lot of people. Go to small businesses, for instance. You go and say you want to use their restroom. If you enter the toilet, you almost want to throw up. People don't understand that the toilet is part of your business. You have all these nice, you know, aesthetics and all of that. Just stroll into the restroom. Or straight into those hidden areas, and it is a complete mess, a complete, uh, you know, a flip from what you see. Mm -hmm. So it's the same culture that has go grown into major public facilities that we just feel like no sense of ownership, no sense of anything. So I would really, really love to see this improvement, and I'm really hoping he succeeds because really, it's a, it's an it's um it's an embarrassment. Mm -hmm. Our airport is an embarrassment. We cannot, I don't even understand how Nigeria, do you understand, has, as big, as wealthy as we are as a country, 
we can't even boast of a very standardized airport. Do you understand? So it's a big well, embarrassment. So I'm praying that he succeeds because if he succeeds, it's going to be a good thing for us because that is the first point of respect. That is the first point of call. So anybody that enters your airport, they already know that, okay. And so Nigeria, like, it just completely embarrasses you when you land in our, in our international airports. So I'm hoping that... It was, it, uh, I hope so too. That's I hope so. I, I, I really hope that he succeeds. I really hope that we see. It's easier for us to say. I'm a not lot even of about to this thing. Let us pray that these things actually work yeah. so that we can we can actually move on. Yeah. Because our airports are an embarrassment. Yeah, that's on true. that note, let's take a break. When we come back from that break, let's discuss the upskilling ourselves. Mm -hmm.